All I can say is the worship, the Holy Spirit has been here from the beginning. And his presence is so real. And when we were in worship, I said, now, Lord, are you sure you didn't make a mistake on what you want me to speak on? But I believe that I have heard from God. And I've never struggled as much as I struggle today. And it took me so long to finally realize exactly. And I was like, well, God, if that's what you're wanting me to do, you're going to have to help me find what I read because I have no idea where it's at. And I went, I went to it. It was a struggle, but I found it. And I feel like God has something for us tonight. It is so good to be in the house of the Lord. And it's so good that we can come and worship a God that is not dead. And he's not deaf. Aaron used to say, mother, he isn't deaf. He isn't deaf. He can hear and he can see. And uh, last week there was, uh, Shirley, you said something. And actually Brent talked and then you were talking too. And I felt like God was giving me something to say to the church. I didn't know if it was an interpretation. I didn't know if it was a prophecy. I was like, Lord, if it's an interpretation, then you are going to have to give somebody because I ain't got the, you know, the giving out thing. I don't have that. But God was speaking to my heart and somebody said it right after that. And God is just saying to us, do you really think that I can't hear you? Do you really think that I don't see what's going on in your life? Do you really think that I am the God that does not lie, but I can do what I said that I would do? And during this fast, I'm telling you, God has opened my ears to hear more plainly and my eyes to see more plainly what he has for me and my path that I walk. And uh, God has revealed things to me in this two weeks of fasting that I didn't ever think I would ever hear in the 60 years of my life. But God is just showing us that there are things in this world that are happening, but don't be deceived because I'm still in control. And I love my, what my friend, uh, Pastor Junior Hogue said. He said, God is still large and in charge. And he is. Nothing slips up on him. There is no oopses with God. He is... He said, I am that I am. And when he said it, he spoke it, he's going to bring it to pass. When I was reading in uh, the first day of the fast, I, I flipped over to Isaiah chapter 58. I always love to read that chapter the whole time that I'm fasting, just to remind me what fasting does for us. And when I flipped over there, October 13th, 2007, anybody know what that year was? April of that year, Josh lost a leg, and we didn't know if he would ever be alive again. When we got there, God had sustained him. God did miracles through him, so many miracles. And October the 13th of 2007, we, the church at Covenant Church, were fasting for our church and for Josh Williams. And man, I'm telling you, I run out in the hall to Crystal, and I said, Crystal, look at this. I can't pick it up now. I've got fingernails. I have nails. I can actually do something. <clears throat> I said, Crystal, look at this. This is why we fast. I said, because see this, October the 10th in 2007, we almost lost our son, but God was still in control. And now look at that. He's got a wife. He found him a woman. There is just as mean and rough and tough as he is, and she can handle him in every which way. So, I mean, I'm telling you, he was blessed. She might not have been so blessed, but Josh was blessed because he got a good thing. I'm just saying to you tonight, this is a reminder every time I read in Isaiah, when I see that, God reminds me that I am still the God that heals. I am still the God that can take your problems and turn them into whatever you need them to be turned into. So whatever you're fasting for, whatever you're dreaming for, you know, sometimes we don't always need to tell our dreams. Pastor almost preached my message this morning, and I had changed the title of it to something different, but I almost, I almost titled it The Dreamer. Because Joseph, man, he had some dreams, 
And uh, we're going to talk about that here in a little bit. And I don't know if I'm going to read it or if I'm just going to tell it. Because it might go faster if I just tell it, okay? Uh, but anyway, it's not going like I had it planned anyway. So, um, but anyway, not everything that God tells you, you need to tell people. Keep it to yourself. Because they, some of the people will be so jealous over you, you will shy back and not let God do what he wants to do in you till the dream will never come to pass. And then some of you will just say, like Pastor did this morning, or like he said, I can't do this. This dream's too big for me. Well, Joseph had a problem with not having enough wisdom because what he did was he had this dream that these, you know, that these people were going to bow down to him. And so Joseph goes to his brothers and he's like, I had a dream last night. And in that dream, I dreamed that. And he told them what the dream was. And he said, and you bowed down to me. And they're like, we bowed down to you? Are you serious? Well, then he said, oh, and then he comes back later and he goes, oh, and I had another dream. And in this dream, not only did you bow down to me, but the moon and the stars. And he just went on and on and on until they envied him. He talked about his dream so much that he was going to be over them that they become upset at their brother and wanted to kill him. Because what happened, he's like, well, where are my, all of my brothers at? And they're, well, they went to Shechem to take care of, you know, some of the animals and stuff. So he went down there. And the Bible says that when they saw him coming, that they all got mad. And they said to each other, let's kill him. And one of the brothers said, no, we can't kill him. Well, let's just put him in the pit. Then, so they did. They put him in the pit. A Lots of things happened in that. But had he not told his dream to everybody... He might not have had to have gone through everything he went through because he was trying to be a smart mouth. Oh, and I, not only did I have a dream about the cows and all this stuff, and you were bowing down to me, and later on, that come to pass. It did come to pass, but it took a long, long bunch of years, and the brothers didn't even, you know, they didn't even recognize him when the time come, and he looked at them. And when he finally had took enough in his heart, Joseph started crying. And he said, I'm your brother. But don't hold that against me. Because a long time ago, you put me in a pit. But see, what God had for me was God put me in the pit to go ahead of y'all to stop some of the things that could happen. Because see, there was a famine in the land. And these guys were going to starve to death had it not been for Joseph having all the food. Dreams are great. And dreams do come to pass, and dreams are of God, but sometimes they just don't need to be told. If I could tell y'all my dreams, <clears throat> I won't do that, though. Although some prayers are meant to be public or group prayers, most of our prayers should be conducted in secret. In other words, we do not have to broadcast how much we... That, you can't say that three times fast. How much we pray and everything we pray about. Jesus encourages us to pray. That's what he wants us to do. But it doesn't mean that we always have to do that. And I asked Keith right before this started, I said, please do not let them record tonight. Please. I begged him. Didn't I, Bryce? I begged him. He wouldn't listen to me. <laughs> Secret prayers mean a number of things. It means that we do not tell everyone our personal experiences in prayer. We pray about the things and God's people that he places on our hearts, hearts, and we keep our prayers between him and us. You don't have to go tell people that you're spiritual. If you've been in the fire, they're going to smell the smoke when they get around you. You don't have to tell them how spiritual you are. I went to Walmart yesterday to uh, grab a few more vegetables and fruit <clears throat> to do me through the week. Praise the Lord. And uh, let me just say this. They don't help with diabetes because mine's been dropping every day and every night. Fruits and vegetables are dropping my sugar. But I did fast long enough to know in these three weeks that I'm not going to do that no more. So I'll just stay on the medicine. <laughs> anyway, I went to Walmart and the girl at the checkout I had a sugar drop 
before I even got to the checkout stand. So when I got there, I kept thinking, God, just let me get to the car. And then I looked down, and I was like, I don't have any kind of fruit that will bring my sugar up. And I really need something. I was shaking. I was so weak. And my sugar's been staying in the 50s and 60s, 70s. So that's really low for me when you're used to staying like, like high. And so anyway, um, the little girl, I, I picked up an Almond Joy. I thought, well, chocolate's good for you, even though it does have caffeine in it. And coconut is a fruit vegetable. And it does have sugar. So that'll bring it up. So I said, God, forgive me, but I got a Mounds candy bar. And so the little girl rang it up, and when she rang it up, instead of putting it in my plastic bag, she goes like this. She puts it across the counter, and she says, I know that you're a praying woman, and I'm asking you that you would pray for me, Shirley, for strength to endure what's happening in my life. And I said, okay. And she, she kept doing like this to see if anybody was watching. If, like There was a lot of the uh, bosses and stuff standing around. And I said, I will. I said, do you want me to pray right now? And I said, don't worry about it. Don't even answer. I'll just pray and act like we're, you know. I just went on about my business. But I stopped and I said a prayer for her. And when I got through, she said, thank you so much. But she said, I need you to continue. And I said, when I leave this place, I will. See, that prayer was not for me to be shown in public. That was not a public prayer. Or for me to get the glory, because I don't know what happened out of that. I didn't get no glory, except I was obedient to God. And I didn't want the girl to get in trouble. See, it wasn't about me being spiritual at the moment. It was about me doing what needed to happen, because that girl needed help. And when I left there, I said, God, touch that girl. I don't know what's going on in her life, but you do. And when God lays things and people on our hearts, sometimes it's not for public. It's just for us. And we need to pay attention to, the, to those prayers and to those things that God places on our hearts. Joyce Meyer, everybody knows Joyce Meyer. She, uh, she said one day she had went to get her nails da- done at a place that she always went to. And she said as she was sitting there and the girl was working on her nails, there was a girl sitting beside her who was a nurse. And uh, she was a nurse for cancer patients. <clears throat> and she said she had a, uh, Joyce had a Jesus pin on her, on her lapel, and it had rhinestones, and it was real pretty. And she said, God spoke to my heart and said, give that girl that pin, and when she bends over to work on her patients, they will see the name of Jesus, and I will touch them. And she said, so I said, okay, God. And she said she kind of sat there for a minute, and she's like, and God, God was telling her, you know, do this in private. And so she waited for a little while, but she said, in, in my flesh, I was like, what? I, I really want people to know what I've done. I mean, that's a godly thing, and that's so good of my heart. So she said, the woman said, oh, excuse me, I need to go get something and no, I'll be right back. And so she said, (laughs) the little girl got up. (laughs) I'm sorry, that's the way they talk. If you go there, that's just the way they talk. (laughs) She said, so the girl got up, and she's about that time, she said, "Uh, I thought, now is the perfect time to do that because the lady's gone. She won't know that I did it. We can just do it between the two. It'll be private, you know. She said, but still that pride in me just kept saying, no, you need recognition. People needs to see that, what you've done. She said, so I sat there and the little lady came back and she said, then I grabbed the pen and I took it off and she said, I got up and told her, you know what, I just want to bless you in the name of Jesus and give you this pen and she told her the reasons why and blah, blah, blah. And they were like, oh, that's so nice that you would do that for her. And everybody oohed and awed, you know, at her. And she said, when I left, and I want to read what she said. Um, Okay. She said, the Lord spoke to my heart, and he said to me, I told you to do that in private. But you wanted public recognition. And this is where I got the title of my message. Well, I hope you enjoyed that because it is all the reward that you're going to get. 
what every reward you have would have had for me, you just traded for compliments. Rewards for compliments. And you know what? If we're doing things for Christ for any other reason but for Christ, we're only doing it for a compliment. That's the only thing. It'd be like me going and say, oh, Katrina, you did such a great job. Here's your plastic reward to wear around your neck. That's all she's going to get because God's not going to mention it no more. You made such a big deal that they gave you the reward. The girls at the nail salon that ooed and awed, that was her reward. But it didn't do nothing for Jesus because he told her to do something else. See, when God speaks to us to do something, we need to do it the way he tells us to do it. In his manner, because if we do it the way we want to do it, then it will all unravel. I'm sorry. And that song, I did it my way. I looked up the words to that day, and it just made me mad when I read the words to it. Well, you know, not saying this braggingly, but really when I die, I just want you to know I did it my way. You did. You probably went to hell over it because you did it your way. You didn't do it God's way. You want to be braggadocious and tell everybody how good you are because you do things on your own? Unless you're doing it God's way, it's the wrong way. You know what? I don't do it as much anymore because I'm 60 years old and it don't matter anymore. But I used to worry about everything I wore, everything. I, didn't I read it? I even would throw the T-shirt if it wasn't a good and I'd throw it out the bus window. But I always worried about what I looked like. Did I please my husband? And I would say, does this bother you? Does this look too, do I look too cheap? But he just answered, I like my women just a little on the trashy side. <laughs> so, They didn't have enough trash bags in Walmart to go around you, so the trash bags was out. No trash bag dresses. Oh, that one was free, baby. But after a while, I got to thinking, I can't please everybody in that church. And I can't please my husband all the time. Even though I try, God's the one that I need to be pleasing. God's the one that I need to be pleasing. When you look at yourself in the mirror, when I went to Weight Watchers, <laughs> how many times did I go to Weight Watchers? <laughs> when I went to Weight Watchers, they would say this, get up every morning, look at yourself in the mirror and say, well, hello, good looking. And I said, I could never do that. And Keith said, well, I could. It wouldn't bother me at all. I know, because you're conceited. <laughs> he said, I could go the and say, you're such a good-looking hunk. And I said, well, I can't do that. Because you know what? Because I didn't have no self-confidence in myself. But when I started realizing that my confidence does not come from man, my confidence comes from Jesus Christ. And he makes me who I am. And as my doctor would say, Dr. Ajay, he said, you're really a weird dude. You're weird. I'm made really weird. Well, I knew that. <laughs> was talking about a while ago about when you're in the fire, people will know because they can smell the smoke. And if you've not been in the fire, they can feel the coals. They can tell you're cold. And I've been in those times. I've lived those times when I was a cool cucumber Christian. I was not, um, I remember one time at Rat Tan, Brother Terry Gregg walked up to Keith and he said, boy, that was a warm message. And then the next week he walked up to him again and he'd say, boy, that was a really warm message. And so one day he was doing it as a joke and Keith, anyway, Keith asked him, <laughs> he said, this is what it means, neither hot nor cold. <laughs> it was kind of a lukewarm message, but he was doing it as a joke. Huh? Not so hot. He, oh, yeah, not so hot. It's not so hot. And I don't know what, where I was at, so I'm going to go back and see if it'll kind of prompt me. When you turn 60 years old, you lose your mind, you lose your teeth, you lose everything. <laughs> I'm 
telling you. Whew. All right. I'm going to go to uh, Matthew chapter 6 and verse 1. It says, take care not to do your good deeds publicly or before men in order to be seen by them. Otherwise, you will have no reward. And this is what Joyce Myers was talking about. You just got your reward. When people bragged on you, that's your reward. You're not going to get that when you go to heaven because, see, that was done for, uh, what is it, uh, your works. Uh, I'm thinking Earth, Wind, and Fire. That's a uh, Christian. I mean, that, that's not a Christian group. It's a singing group. Um, your works, wood, hay, and stubble, those things are going to burn. Those are things that you just had to do. Well, I go to church three times on Sunday night. Once I go because I want to. The second time I go because I have to because, you know, it's a 10-1 Serve one. I don't know where the serve went, but we lost that like a year ago. Attend one, serve one. Guys, God is looking for people that are faithful, that are ready to put on their boxing gloves and go to Fist City with the enemy and let him know that we are not afraid. We're going to mess up. We're going to have trials and tribulations, but Jesus said, be of good cheer for I've overcome the world. He is our maker. He is the way maker. He's, everybody wears that shirt, but they don't really realize what that shirt means. He is our everything. You couldn't even walk if it wasn't for Jesus Christ. And I'm so thankful for that. Whenever you give to the poor, do not blow a trumpet before you as the hypocrites and the synagogues and the streets like you do, that they may be recognized and honored and praised by men. Truly, I tell you, they have the reward in full already. And then we flip on over to the 10th verse in Luke 17. Two men went up to the temple to pray, and the Pharisees and the other a tax collector. Now the Pharisee took his stand and began to pray thus before and with himself. God, I thank you that I'm not like the rest of these men, extortioners, robbers, swindlers, unrighteous in heart and life, and adulterers, and even like this tax collector here. I fast twice a week. I give my tithes of all that I gain, but the tax collector, merely standing at a distance, would not even lift up his eyes to heaven. But he kept striking his breast, saying, Oh God, be favorable. Be gracious and be merciful to me, an especially wicked sinner that I am. This wicked sinner, he wasn't there to get recognition. He was only there. He was being serious before God. God don't care how many times you pay. And God does not care how many times you shunned a loo, loo, loo in the spirit. And he don't care how many times you fall out, Dalton. He's got this little thing. Now when you walk up to him, he just, he looks around the floor. We had a woman like that in our church one time. She would look at the floor to see if there was any men beside her before she fell. But Dalton looked, <laughs> she would look around. And finally, he told the people one day, he said, leave her alone. Step aside. He said, if you think she's going to fall, just step aside. Well, that woman hit the floor like a door, I mean, hard. And she bounced, she hit so hard. But she never looked for another man's shoulder to fall on. That took care of that. That's when you can tell if it's God. I don't even know what I'm saying. I'm, I'm completely lost. Help me, Rita. <clears throat> I tell you, <laughs> this man went down to his home justified, forgiven and made upright and in right standing with God. Rather than the other man, for everyone who exalts himself will be humbled, but he who humbles himself will be exalted. That's what I want in my life. I want Christ to be exalted so that he can exalt me. In due time, in due season, we will reap if we faint not. And there is a reward laid up for me. Man, I ain't going to miss it. I've, I've paid too much, a debt 
and the life that I have lived for Jesus Christ, I put too much time into it to let the devil have it. Because I'm telling you right now, we need to live so close to God that when we wake up in the morning, the enemy looks it up, he says, oh my God, she's up again. We, he needs to be afraid of us instead of us afraid of him. Because we walk around all the time in fear. And I, I had that shirt on uh, the other day, fear is a liar. You wear that shirt around, fear is a liar. And people's looking at like, well, they don't have no fear. You're the most fearful person out there sometimes. Because you're afraid of everything that's happening, going on in your life. But fear is a liar. And Jesus, can, he, he has control of that. And I don't even know where I'm at. But this one thing I do know. Looking unto Jesus, who is the author and the finisher of our faith. And he is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we can ask or think. According to the power that worketh within him, us. He is able, guys. And on this fast, we have one week left. Jesus, I don't even want to wake up in the morning because I know that I'm going to get oranges and apples. And, but you know what? It's, you get to think about it. It's the same old food over and over and over. You just fix it a different way every time. You, you put it in olive oil this time. Well, the next time you put it in the oven, it's still the same thing. It's just a little different. And when you wake up, you're thinking, oh, my Lord, but we've got one week left. And how many can feel like me? You know God has done something already in the two weeks. He has done so much in these two. I can see the hand of God moving. You can feel it in the services when you come to worship. You can feel it, the freedom in the people. You can see it on their face. You can tell those that have been in the Word, that have been fasting, because you can smell them. They smell like smoke. They're on fire for Jesus Christ, and I love that song. Uh, Aaron, something about the fire, we just got through singing. Uh, I can't think of what the words was, but we need to be in the fire. We need to be in the fire. And this last week of our fast... I want us to realize that we're not just fasting for man. We're not just fasting for each other. Don't you dare be a policeman of people's fast, of their food, and follow them around in Walmart. Well, that ain't on the Daniel fast, is it? Who cares? They're the one answering to God. You eat your beans, and you eat your taters, and you eat your fruit. Because I'm telling you, come Monday, come Monday, it'll be all right. No, it will, it will. Because as Hazel said to me the other day, she said, listen, we don't eat a lot of meat and stuff like that. She said, but I done made up my mind when this fast is over, I'm going to have me a big cheeseburger. <laughs> I am too. Keith asked me the other day, he said, what do you miss most about the fast? And I said, Meat. I want meat, some meat. I'm going to have the next meal. It's just going to be all kinds of meat, just a whole platter of different kinds of meat. Maybe that'll help my sugar. I don't know. Anyway, I, I, I've got to wind this up. But guys, God loves us so much. And when Joseph, Joseph was so different. And the thing about Joseph, his father loved him more than any of the kids. It's well known in the word when you read that, that he loved Joseph more than anybody. And he made him that coat. But that little coat got him in trouble. You better be careful whose clothes you're borrowing. If they don't fit, you don't wear them. God has your own life mapped out for you. And he has his own plan worked out for you. And it's a good plan. It's a plan to prosper you and not to harm you. It's a plan to give you hope in a future. And he is there and he will do exactly what he said that he would do. And this is what I want us to do tonight. If you guys can just play music um, where Aaron can pray through. He needs prayer. He needs to pray through. I've been there as a musician and a singer where you're there all the time and you're making sure you got the right song so Sister Susie can get blessed. Whether you like that song or not, you've got to sing it. 
and then you don't get blessed because you go home and you're, you're so tired. They need prayer too, and they need God. But what I want us to do tonight is to make a new commitment for this week. If you've never fasted, I, I, I have no idea. I know some that are. I know some that are not. I, I mean, I don't know if you're fasting. But if you are, have not fasted, I know that Bryce ate half of an orange crush cake. <laughs> Which is not on the Daniel fast. I'm quite sure. <laughs> not only did he have half, he ate another fourth of it today. His face is red. He's going like, my God, Aaron, take care of your mother. <laughs> Refocus this last week. Refocus and say, God, whatever my focus was the last two weeks, now I want you to work on me. Work on me. Show me, show me things that I need to change. I promise if you look at yourself, okay, the movie Fireproof, you know there is a book that goes with it. And you can read that book, and it tries to help your marriage and all that. Yeah, I didn't love it so much. Yeah, because it told me what I was doing wrong and that I was going to have to fix and straighten up. But that's what happens when we get in the Word. You get in this Word right here, and today God was taking care of me because He took me out behind the woodshed. What are you doing? Are you doing it for man? Are we doing what we're doing for man? Or are we really doing it to see God move in this, this sanctuary? And if we are, my memory today was a word that was spoken to us at Dwayne Miller's church when our church all went up there. We were around the front, and I had sent it to Stephen. But Stephen, I got so busy, I just forgot about that. It was not going to be in the picture tonight. But he spoke a word over our church, and he said people would come from the north, the south, the east, and the west. And he said, not everything you do, people are going to, not all people will go with you. And it's the same thing. Not everybody in Joseph's dream believed what God was going to do through him. They didn't hang in there with him, but he hung in there with them because at the last, he's the one that had their life spared. Guys, I'm just telling you tonight, God wants to do something new in us. And he's not going to start out in the world till he gets us ready. Till he gets us fixed. I want us to just come tonight. I don't care if you pray five minutes, if you pray two minutes. Now listen, you need to pray to you pray through. Don't just pray to you get through. You know what I'm saying? Pray through. Because I can get through real fast. The spirit of sleep just comes on me as soon as I hit my knees to go to praying. I'm serious. People say, why do you listen to music? Because it's, I can focus and hear the music and it keeps me awake. If not, I'm out like a light. Anyway, that's what I want us to do. This is my altar call tonight. I, I want you guys just to refocus on your thinking for this last week of our fast. And say, God... This is what I told him. You got seven days to change me. If you don't change me within seven days, there ain't no hope for me. Keith already knew that. <laughs> I was coming to work. I got to tell this one more thing, and I promise we're trying to get spiritual. I was coming to work, and <clears throat> it was cold. Keith will not turn the heat on in the morning. And it's like 60-something in the house. And it was, it's winter, okay? It's January. And I went to turn the air down, and Keith heard, put the heat up, and Keith goes, eh, 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 not so much. And I said, you are not going to control me. <laughs> he said, I know, I've been trying. And I said, I know, you've been trying 60 years, and it ain't worked so quick. You're not trying to control me. Because Kathy's going, you know. Anyway, let's, let's come. Maybe this is the part that I need to get in. Well, just forget it. Turn the music on. Let's get serious before God. Really, guys, he does want to meet us here tonight. And he does want to show us something different than what we're thinking. He wants to do a new thing in us. So come, guys.